Night singing opera at the Met after waiting tables for two decades. We cannot wait to meet her. And speaking of dream gigs, we'll try to help you land yours or maybe just change career. You're not a man. Wow, her well received performance was all the more remarkable because for the past 20 years or so, Miss Sunegard had been waiting tables. Erica Sunegard. Good morning and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Thank can you. I just say that yesterday you were on the front page of the New York Times. I know. And then you were center stage at the Met. What is it like to be you? Are you still pinching yourself saying, did this really happen? Yeah, it's, it's sort of surreal. So it's, it's, it's me, but it's not me, if you understand. <laughs> when you were on stage yesterday afternoon for the matinee at the Met, mm -hmm. were you nervous? Tell me about what that felt like well, up there. It's nerves and adrenaline, but I, I, it was... You sort of do the job too, so there's a framework inside of which you exist. Uh -huh. So it's not like you're out there ad libbing, right? You know? So, so in that sense, it makes it easier. To hear all that applause must have felt when that washed all over you. Yeah. That must have felt terrific. Yeah. Tell me about it was, that. It was, it was pretty freaky. It was, a, it was loud. It was unbelievably loud. <laughs> I like how you described it. Freaky. <laughs> now, you are, um, you were always a trained singer, but it was tough to get work for you, and you spent a lot of time. Um, waiting tables was yeah. that frustrating for you? Tell me about well, that. Well, it, it wasn't more. It wasn't so. I never auditioned so, so uh -huh. much. So uh, it wasn't like I was trying to get work and didn't get it. It was right. more that I knew that I wasn't ready. So and for opera, you have to have a very solid technical foundation. And and for my repertoire, it's even more important. It's sort of like if you're a race car and you go really fast off track, uh -huh. that would be what it would be like for me to not have a solid technique. So I just needed to wait until I was ready, and and that was now and. In the meanwhile, I had to supplement with all sorts of other things while singing smaller jobs. So when you were supplementing with, with all these other things, I, I, I was reading about how at one point they said that you were wearing this polyester tuxedo, yeah. you had a couple of wine bottles in your hand, yeah. and you were working a wedding. Yeah, me and, and thousands of other cater waiters in New York. Yeah. And you were, uh, what happened on that day? It was kind of poignant. Well, it was, I, I was at this massive wedding, and mm -hmm. you're in there, you know, 95 degrees and yeah. polyester tuxedo, and you have a red bottle and a white bottle, and you're <laughs> waiting for guests to arrive. And you go, oh my God, is this it? You know, is this what life is? Is this what it's going to be? And, and um, so I sort of I pulled myself out of the little momentary mm -hmm. self-pity there and, and took stock of things. And, you know, my life didn't suck. I mean, it was pretty great <laughs> anyway, you know. So, I mean, I, I realized that it was fine and that then there was singing to do as well. The New York Times likened this to a beat cop being appointed by the president to be the secretary of defense. J quickly, how did you get this break? How did you go from waiting I, tables to my, the Yeah, Met? my my agent who I had started out mm -hmm. with two years ago had a conversation with them, got me an audition. I did not, two auditions uh, two, almost two years ago, May of 2004, mm -hmm. and they hired me then to do a variety of things. And then yesterday was sort of like cream on top because it was the broadcast and and so it's you know too bad that that Matila got sick but um, it's for me it was an extraordinary opportunity well so well, can I ask you are you done with waitressing now is it all over because uh, now it, you're it a has big been star for a couple of years yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. what's next now for you yeah. I'm pretty booked yeah so for me it's more just sort of getting experience and, and honing my craft more and and uh, getting to do the job daily and and you know, becoming more secure on my feet. Well, I have to tell you, we were all so excited to read about your story. I'm even Thank more you. excited to be sitting here with you now. Well, I'm excited <laughs> to be here, too. <laughs> and I'm just so happy for you for last Thank night. You. We wish you all the best here at the Today Thank Show. You. Thanks, Erica. Thank we so appreciate much. it. And we're going to hear more about Erica's story tomorrow on Today. And also, still to come, do you want to follow in Erica's footsteps and score a new job or maybe change you at the <laughs> also, later on, I'll be hitting the dance floor out on the plaza with Antonio Vendor. It's Ooh, nice. More car for the money. The city's Metropolitan Opera House. And later, actor Antonio Banderas. But guess what? Saturday night, before a packed house, she made her debut at the Metropolitan Opera, singing the lead in Beethoven's Fidelio. Sonnegard, good morning and congratulations. Thank you. This is, I mean, you know, 18 months ago, you were waiting tables, and Saturday night you're debuting at the Met. I mean, the Met. 
This isn't like, you know, a community <laughs> college in Coney yeah. Island. This is the Met. What was yeah. the experience like? It's amazing. I mean, it's the sort of indescribable joy and happiness and sort of excitement. And then when you allow yourself to think about the magnitude of it, you sort of go, oh, God, I can't believe I'm standing here and, and all these people well, are hearing this. What, were you able to take a breath during the actual <laughs> performance and soak in the scene at all and, and enjoy it? Or was there simply too much pressure, too many moving parts? Yeah, well, until the second act started, there was just too much going on. Because in the intermission, we had to rehearse, you know, being hoisted up on the shoulders of strapping lads and, you know, climbing down <laughs> ladders and all of that fun, kind of stuff that had to happen in the second act. So we were actually practicing stuff in the, in the intermission. So once the second act started, then I felt like things started to settle in and I could sort of dig in and go, you know. Let me do a little of the backstory here. This isn't a fluke, okay? No, I mean, no, you know, no. you're, you're, it's not like they found you on the street and said, would you like to sing at the Met? <laughs> I mean, you're from Sweden. Not Both so your often. parents are very well-noted voice teachers. Yes. A and you left Sweden, I think, at the age of 19. Yes. In some ways, to escape that legacy, right? Well, I, I was dancing at the time, and I thought New York was the center of the universe, which, of course, it is. But, <laughs> and, uh, but then, I, it, now in hindsight, I would say that it was probably a way to get away from home, and I put an ent entire ocean between me and, and teenagehood. But still having so. the dream in the back of your head, in the front of your yeah. head, at different stages of your life. Yeah, I mean, singing was always part of my life, and I never thought that I was special enough to do it as a soloist. I mean, that never occurred to me until I came here, and a couple of years later, I missed it, and I wanted to sing more. So, you, so you're waiting tables, just in terms of the odd jobs, you were also singing at funerals? Well, I, I was a cantor at a church, right. so I sang all the masses, and the, and the funerals, and the weddings. So and, and, and actually, so, so you learned a lot of life, le life lessons doing yeah. that. Well, it's amazing singing for people in their most intimate moments, whether they be joyful or sad, or, you know, and, and people come to church not to hear music necessarily, but to do something else, and to so music becomes a purpose. Uh, it's not, music is not the purpose. Music is the thing that people get on top of what they're looking for. And it can be a really amazing thing for them to, to have the music be part of that. And it's not about me. It's about delivering something in the context. But at some else. point you had to concentrate on you again and say, okay, it's time now. All along. It, it's time now to say, okay, let's do this. I think you were catering an event one night and you kind of looked around and said, you know what? I gotta get back. I gotta start auditioning, I, and that's really. Yeah, I, I mean, it was more like I went, "Oh my God, is this it? You know, am I gonna serve tables for the rest of my life?" And then I realized, you know, on top of life being pretty great as it was, which it was, I got that. There was singing to do, and then there's more like I, pl I pulled the plug on the drama of it because otherwise it can be really scary right. to go out and say, you know, yeah, you should hear me sing. You know, that's a really weird thing to say. And so when you just sing because it's great and fun, then it's. It's easier. You had been signed as an understudy and, and were scheduled to appear on the 13th, but the lead fell ill, and so you got the big call yeah. on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So when is the next time you're going to get to perform? And do you think you'll be more nervous for that one than the first one? No, I think, I, no, I think if I get to do it again now. I mean, I have my 13th of April performance that I'm scheduled for, and uh, that'll be great. But if I get to do it before then, then that, that, that'll just be bonus and fun. And and exciting. Well, the New York Times review said she is a singer with talent, grit, and determination. <laughs> that sounds pretty okay. good, doesn't it? I'll take that. Put right take up on the wall too. at home. Erica, congratulations. It's a great story. Thank you so much. 15 after the